Today we're going to be talking about some changes I'm making here in the lab shop, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we'll get you up to date on the H2S in the first 80 hours. Now I realize you're thinking 80 hours, that's nothing. Is that not enough for you? I get it. But here's the thing, all, most of those, I wouldn't say all, but most of those 80 hours have been with ABS and ASA. I really wanted to put this machine to the test. See, with the X1C, if you wanted to print PLA or PETG for that matter, it wasn't a problem. Everything worked out great. But when you wanted to do a little more advanced materials like ABS and ASA, you had to do some forward planning to make sure everything would work. So I really wanted to put some hours behind the H2S and put it kind of to the test with some overhangs with ABS and do some ASA prints for my truck, which I don't typically do that kind of stuff. I'm kind of like a wheels, tires, window tent audio guy. That was it. Like, that's pretty much all I do. Or you want to call it OEM plus kind of guy or whatever, but I never was big on putting a bunch of accessories on my vehicles. Are you poor now? With that in mind, there was a couple of things I figured I could tolerate to print for the truck. So we went ahead and did that in ASA for the stuff that would be outside and ABS for the stuff that would be inside the truck. And we'll get to all that here soon. But I did do one particular print and this particular print caused a machine to leave my little lab. And yeah, that's the Cobra 3 Max. It's now gone because the H2S was able to print this. Now this is PETG, but it's 387 millimeters and it holds five H2S plates. This is a plate holder so your extra plates can slide in here and sit beside the machine. This came out ridiculously well. I mean, like, it's beautiful. And at that point, I was like, I don't need the Cobra 3 Max anymore. Oddly, I put it up on Facebook and Marketplace, and within just a few hours, I got a message, and the guy gave me my full asking price. So, cool. Now we've got some extra cash to invest in some new stuff for the shop. Now, I've been thinking about replacing it anyway because, you know, there's a first-gen machine out there that I would print PLA on, and, uh, well, it's probably going to require some tinkering. You know, first-gen machines aren't really bulletproof, and I don't like to keep more than one machine around that requires tinkering, so I needed to make room anyway. Now, when or if I order that particular printer, and we're talking about the Snapmaker U1, We'll see. I've reached out to Snapbaker to see if they wanted to collaborate and... They're not going to respond. Uh, the problem is, is if you put an order in for one right now, you won't get it until April. That doesn't work for me. I don't... I'm not, I'm not going to give you my $800 and then you make me wait till April. That's not how I work. I'll order something and if it's delayed a week or so, that's fine. But no, nah, not April. So we'll see how things go. If they get caught up on production and they start releasing printers on a, you order it and get it within a week or two, then we'll check it out. Because from all the videos I've seen of the Snapmaker U1, I think it's probably going to be a pretty good machine, but I haven't been able to get my hands on it. So I guess we'll find out. All right, so let's get into what we did print with ASA and ABS for this specific machine and we'll see how it went. First up, my Nemesis ABS. Now I created this scoop a little while back and put it on Maker World. I'll drop you guys a link, but it's essentially a giant overhang and ABS is always giving me problems with bed adhesion and overhangs. So I was a bit shocked at the way this came out. Now I typically use this scoop for chicken food or goat food and it didn't need to be ABS, but it worked out great. And while the ABS is loaded up, why not take on another project I've been meaning to do? My Ram 1500 has like a map pocket on the top of the dash, and I wanted to create an accessory rail that I could mount my Insta360 Go and my phone up on the dash. So we printed it out in ABS and got it mounted up, and yeah, it's a prototype. It's not quite there yet, but so far I'm pretty impressed. I think I'll have a couple more renditions of this before we call it final. 
Next, we move on to ASA. Now, this is a two-color ASA print. Now, I've had better luck with ASA in the past than I have ABS, so I wasn't surprised when this one came out really good, but it was worth testing. Now, this is a hitch cover just to keep the dust and dirt out of my receiver on my truck when I'm not using it, and no surprise, it printed out amazing. Now, while I had the ASA loaded up, I went ahead and printed a couple of caps for my bed rails on my truck. I did have to wander out to the frozen tundra that is West Virginia right now to get a video of it, but here you go. They turned out great. Plugged right in and didn't give me any problems at all. So over that 80 hour period, I printed out several renditions of the same part as I tweaked geometry and some parts I haven't shown you, but I can say that everything just went off without a hitch. Now for the Cobra 3 Max, I had mentioned earlier, I'm thinking about the Snapmaker U1. If I can ever get my hands on one, I think it would be a great spot for where the Cobra 3 Max was. And then that would give me the ability to run some multi-material for those things that like the grandkids and my daughter and my wife might want. Those are multi-color material prints that I would never do on these printers. So it opens up some options. The other one is the uh, Xtool F2. Now, not the F2 Ultra, daddy ain't that rich, uh, but the F2, I thought about getting also, that would be a great option as I print ABS and ASA and PETG, I could actually use the laser unit in that machine to mark my prints, create labels or designs, sounds like a really good idea. Plus it opens the door a little bit to do stuff with like wood and other materials that I don't normally do. So the whole thing is, you know, adding the resin machine to my lineup of machines and even adding a laser is just to create like a complete toolkit in this room that will allow me to just make anything I want. And the more tools you have to create anything you want, the better off you are, obviously. So these are things I'm considering. I wish I could get my hands on a U1 a little bit faster, but I'm just not willing to invest $800 and then wait till April to hope it shows up. All right, guys. Well, that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Later.